Eldritch horrors, heart-pounding gun battles, unstoppable mercenaries, murderous nightmares. All of these and much more exist within the multiple worlds crafted together by author Larry Correa. This tome is a smattering of short stories ranging from a realistic shootout in Africa, an elven princess joining modern-day monster hunters, and a day in the life of the number one interdimensional insurance agent. Some may call this collection crazy and too awesome to handle, but others? This is what I call a target-rich environment. The book was published recently in 2018 and was my first foray into Larry Correa's work. And now I can honestly say that I have been a complete idiot for not picking up his work sooner. I've had a copy of Monster Hunter International on my shelves for years and I've never gotten to it. I'll be correcting that soon enough. However, the format of the book does make it difficult to talk about as a whole. Going in, I had thought about picking my favorite three stories to talk about and going into detail with them, but after finishing the whole book, I can't decide which I liked most. Every single one of the 14 stories rank very highly in quality, adventure, thrills, with a smattering of jokes that really hit their marks. And the characters are all wonderfully introduced and sewn into their stories. I haven't grown attached to characters this quickly since Discworld. Most of the stories have at least a foot in another series. Many are from Korea's older works, but he's also dipped into other collections, like David Drake's Hammer Slammers or Jonathan Mayberry's V Wars. So for the uninitiated, and to stop myself from jabbering for an hour, I'll just discuss three stories from Korea's more popular series. First up is Bubba Shackelford's Professional Monster Hunters. This one is an origin story for Monster Hunter International, a clandestine group that takes out all sorts of demons, freaks, and of course, monsters. The story is set when America was still expanding west. Bubba Shackelford is your average, hardworking entrepreneur who started a meager business traveling between towns to hunt down the monsters that were slaughtering the innocent. With him is his ragtag team of misfits and nobodies, skilled marksmen, demolition experts, and hunters who are otherwise cast out by society. He doesn't care if they're black, Irish, disfigured, or whatever, as long as they're willing and able to fight. Or rather, that was his position, until a precocious woman named Hannah Stone approached him looking for a job. Is Stone good enough to tag along, or is she just going to get herself killed trying to prove something? While not the only MHI story in the collection, Bubba Shackelford's Professional Monster Hunters demonstrates Korea's ability to throw a bunch of seemingly random characters at you, then have you care about them as they're tossed into mortal danger. I'm reminded of Guardians of the Galaxy in that way. In my case, at least, you don't know the characters well, but you end up enjoying their antics through a combination of comedy and action scenes, which makes for a very enjoyable story. Plus, Korea's daughter apparently helped him write this one, and that's pretty cool. Next is Sweathi City contemporary action story set in the Dead Six series. It's the story of Lorenzo, a black sheep of a mercenary band. The band has been trapped inside a rioting city with no hope of getting out, so Lorenzo was sent out to cause a distraction so the rest of the mercenaries can survive. The story is one big action scene as Lorenzo faces down murderous rebels and a Russian BTR tank with some of the most intense action scenes I've seen since Saving Private Ryan. Korea's technical knowledge of guns and tanks really comes through in this one as Lorenzo puts up the fight of his life against impossible odds. The real gem of the story is how much pristine detail Korea is able to write in. For most of the story, I felt like I was running right alongside Lorenzo, ducking for cover and returning fire while buildings exploded all around me. Some stories really draw you in, but this one doesn't give you a choice. Finally, there's a short story from the Grim Noir Chronicles called Detroit Christmas. The story follows Jake Sullivan, a super-powered private eye in Detroit, trying to solve a missing persons case in time for the holidays. The first of two Grim Noir Chronicle stories, this tale really opened my eyes to Korea's ability to create a healthy magic system. In this series, some people are called actives and have abilities far beyond regular people. Some can freeze the air around them, some can heal people with a touch, but our hero, Jake Sullivan, is called a heavy. He can affect the gravity of items around him or sense people around him by feeling the weight change on the floor. While the story itself wasn't my favorite, Korea does such a good job introducing the magic system to a nascent audience that you don't need to be a veteran of his work to understand it. He does all the heavy lifting for you. Overall, Target Rich Environment is absolutely a page turner, well worth the read. The stories are quick, but I think of them as appetizers for Korea's other works. What I really appreciated is that the stories were incredibly varied, so you weren't getting just the same kind of thing back to back. There's action, there's suspense, there's mystery, there's fantasy, and The Adventures of Tom Stranger, Interdimensional Insurance Agent was one of the funniest things I've read in a long, long time. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.